Well, you talk about you know different eras. So these days you're in the social media era, uh, era, yes, yeah. where back then if you wanted to get at another rapper, you had to go book studio time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, create a song, put the song out, get it distributed, because there was no internet. You can't, you know, you can't email it. I mean, th th yep. there technically was email, but no one really had email no. back then. No. So, and you had mentioned in a, in a previous interview that the, the, the 90s era was more aggressive yes. than it is now. Yes. Can you, exp can you explain that? Uh, well, you know, two of our biggest uh, MCs out the 90s got murdered. You know, R.I.P. Tupac, Shakur, and Biggie Smalls. And that should show you enough that, you know, our era was very serious about what we did and we took this music shit serious um like i said uh like you said uh you're right um it wasn't that kind of communication y'all have now um we had to distribute a record for a disc record to be played or even put it on a tape and for it to be played on a mix show but usually the beefs and krs one can vouch you know usually beefs was meeting you at your show or meeting you at your sound check or just coming to your block or setting that, sh you know, whatever. It was definitely more of a more right there in your face kind of thing than, you know, to now where you can just communicate through social media and y'all can quiet the beef down. And that's good. That's good that y'all have a social media platform where y'all can squash the beef, where y'all don't have to meet each other at y'all show and the sound check and fuck the show up for everybody. That's fucking good. Um, but you know, back then it was, we didn't have that communication. And you know, we was very, look, that goddamn MC Hammer, very serious about beef. Y'all motherfuckers laugh and y'all joke about Hammer. No, 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 no. That nigga was deep with niggas. And he used to what anybody who talked shit come to the Bay Area, they was in for it. Because we seen it. I seen it. And he was very serious about beef. Oh, you going to talk about my dancing pants? I see you. And he will whoop a nigga out. Um, our, our era was aggressive in that way is that in a way of we 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 love this music so much that we was willing to meet you at your show for it we wasn't really we wasn't ready to talk with the media to calm it down we we didn't let it die through everyone talking because everyone got it on an email or their blog and now the beef is settled no once someone said something about you it was hard to hear another response like did he say sorry? And if he did say sorry, it ain't come through the grapevine to another week or so. By then, you already done seen a nigga at another show already. So, yeah, it was really, really aggressive, man. And, yeah, we it shit went down in the streets. It wasn't really no phone calls, no emails saying I'm sorry. It was just right there. Okay, you said something. We meeting you at your show. You know the routine. And my crew was good for doing that. Big up the DJ Twins, Brooklyn. We in the building, Brick City in Brooklyn. But yeah, we seen niggas on the spot all the time. <laughs> Fuck. Like who, who, who are some of the people that, that you had issues with oh, during who, that era? Who have I had yeah. problems with? I never had problems with nobody. They, me and Mob Deep used to have a little beef and shit, but it wasn't nothing. We seen them one time and it was over. We squashed it. We never got the fight and it was nothing. I really never had no beef with nobody. All my beefs was you ain't hear about. It was on the street. Like, like I, my shit wasn't televised. And real niggas, that's like me, that's in a rap game, that just don't give a fuck that, you know, you, you ain't gonna let the rap game fool change you. If anybody talks shit or whatever, you gonna go see them regardless. You don't give a fuck about the rap game. I'm one of those niggas. I can laugh with you in the hall day and I don't brag about no guns and no hammers, no nothing. But when this time, I go get my brother and we go get that hammer and we handle fucking business. And all my beefs, most of my beefs, I got my hammer myself and went to go see the nigga. Like, yeah, and they were surprised to see me too. Like, yeah, I heard you was, maybe we can, and yeah, they had they hammer most of the time too. 
And yeah, it could have went either way, but it wasn't televised. And I ain't never talk about it. And you won't hear that in my record. But yeah, that shit really go down, especially where I'm from. And I got to stay on my toes with that. So yeah, but far as the rap game, nah, nah, uh-uh. I'm a smoker. Smokers don't be getting in. Come on. Smoker, come <laughs> well, on, smoker. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned MC Hammer. I remember I seen an interview with uh, MC Search from Third Base. And remember, Third Base had dissed MC Hammer. Yeah. And uh, he told this whole long story about how MC Hammer put a hit out on these dudes. Yes, they with did. With like, like the, the Crips in, in L.A. Yes. To the point. I believe it. Yes. Yeah. MC Hammer don't fucking play. And believe me, you not. If they would have came back in L.A. and that word was crossed, they probably would have got touched. It was serious. Ham- Yo, y'all got to do the knowledge on Hammer, man. Yo, even when I said about Hammer, yo, I said, listen to my first album. When I did the skit, and I was like, you know what? That goddamn MC Hammer, fuck him, fuck his mama and the whole nine. That nigga came up to me on MTV Cribs on the last episode they had where everybody out on, not MTV Cribs, sorry about that, I'm zoned. Um, on the last uh, Dr. Dre and Ed Lover uh, on MTV. When they had the last episode. Yo, yo MTV Raps. Yeah, Yo MTV Raps. When the last episode they shot, when they had everybody rapping on it, MC Hammer was there. That nigga approached me. He was like, Red, I'm going to tell you something. You're young, but I don't allow nobody talking about my mama. You understand me? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> because, yo, we was already in Oakland with EPMD, and we damn near had to bounce up out of there for that. Because they had niggas back here, back here, back here. We had to get the fuck out of here. They wasn't playing. We was almost boxed in. And, and I'm at a young age, too. I'm like, yo, this nigga is not playing. And he seen me at MTV Chris. He shook my hand. He was like, you're a youngin'. I like what you do. But you just know I don't play nobody talking about my mama. And I was like, you right, my nigga. I, I wasn't cool. I wasn't no pussy. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, my nigga. You know what I mean? But I was like... Yes, sir, MC Hammer. In other words, I got the message. I heard about you, and I seen your work, and what the 357 and all them motherfuckers could do. I seen that shit. I, I'm good, my brother, because I got to come to the West Coast and get money. I like it out there. I like the Bay Area. So, yeah, fuck that. You right. I won't talk about your mama, but... <laughs> wait, wait, you say you say the three five seven. You talking about uh, Oaktown? Yeah, yeah, the Oaktown girls, the, the, all of them. The, the, the three, all of the three them. girls. All of them was out there. The girls, the women, everyone, the men, everyone, everyone rose. It wasn't just niggas out there. Bitches was ready to mash any bitches that we had or any other crew had. Any bitches y'all came with, they getting mashed out too. Serious. It was serious with Hammer. Crazy. 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 It was, yo, you I, ask I know, around. I know. I've interviewed MC Hammer before. He, I, yo, he, ask around. Cool it ain't just me talking shit. And I'm a real nigga. And I don't, you know, I don't brag on other niggas. But I say that about Hammer because he did so, so much for rap, even though people didn't consider him as an MC. But regardless, he's a black man that helped carry the culture over. And he did it big. And he's a guy that believed in anything that he going to do, he going to do that shit big. That's just what it is. Whether it's going to be music or you going to talk about me, we going to fight. This is my crew, a hundred motherfuckers. So I got to respect that man. I always respected him. That's why I talked about him on my album, because I respected him. Like, he's so large, I got to get at him. What do you think about the whole situation? Man, my point of view, man, I really feel like they tried to paint a, a bad picture on my brother and tried to make him look like... Like he was a hater, uh, it was some envy, jealousy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And actuality, you know what I'm saying? Bro, been having this shit, man. He been in the condo. I got my hat on and I had my Coke bottles up under my hat. And I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on, knowing she gonna tell me to take it off. And I'm just sitting there just gawping down, you know, in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coat everywhere. 